Hey, it was CinemaCon last week, and so I'm covering it this week. Earlier, we've covered Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin, god that's too long of a title, as well as Disney's Moana sequel, but until they finally stop being cowards and reveal the Sonic 3 trailer or Mufasa or something, I'm here today to talk to you about Inside Out 2. This movie's not getting another trailer, at least not from CinemaCon, if I can predict that. Simply because Disney did a very interesting thing during the presentation that they had. They didn't just reveal another three minutes of footage so that people can scour and make terrible CGI replacements to fake new trailers or something. No, what they decided to do was showcase 35 minutes of the movie and then stop there. The ultimate edging to all cinema executives, I guess. It was the first 35 minutes, by the way. Crazy if they just showed the final 30 minutes, could you imagine? But still, there have been all sorts of descriptions of what happened, and though I'm not gonna go full blazes into the spoilery elements of the movie, as much as it's only the first third, it's probably not that spoilery, we're gonna talk a little bit over time about what kind of things they try to explore to justify a sequel movie. Don't worry, I'll give you warnings to when we get to the point where it might be, you know, you might wanna skip it to see it yourself. But let's talk about it, because it's been a good while since we've looked at the bigger picture of Inside Out 2. It is yet again another Pixar sequel, and considering the fact that we're now in the phase where Disney is making all sorts of more sequels out of their most popular things to scrounge for success after the failure of Disney Wish, that is still following to haunt them I bet, this was another one of those projects that didn't really seem like it was worth it. Namely because the first one was just so creative and inventive that it would be a surprise to be able to top that initial story. With the way that it manages to recontextualize bodily functions in a way that is easy to perceive for children and also greatly entertaining, this really is the magical golden ticket for a premise. And can a second movie really keep up to it? Obviously, we've seen all sorts of examples so far that seem to lean towards yes, but obviously we haven't seen the full picture. In fact, in a lot of ways, this movie kind of seems to be writing itself. At the very end of the first movie, they went on to say, what's that? Oh my god, it's puberty! So clearly making a movie entirely around puberty is easy, makes sense. Though at the same time, they could very easily be writing themselves into corners here. So you're telling me that a child can only have five emotions, and the moment we get to puberty, we double that amount of emotions? Where does that go from there? Is it going to be that when you're an adult, you're getting another additional five emotions? Like, after a certain point, that starts to get exceedingly high. Add on to the fact that we see inside of the adult's head, and they only have the basic five emotions as well, and suddenly, maybe we've got plot holes dealing with here. Now, obviously, the first 35 minutes of the movie aren't going to reveal the answers to that, and to be honest, in my personal prediction, I expect all five of them are going to disappear at the end of puberty or something. Still, for me, the thing that really kind of matters is the representation of all the more deeper inner ideas of the human body, you know? I love, basically, I love all the puns in Inside Out. Not a big fan of puns in general, but I like it in Inside Out. I love the train of thought, the concept of core memories. That is not a pun, that is just slang that we've kept up as a society. The way they show dreams as projectors and actors. Or abstract thought really playing around with shapes. That, I think, is where Inside Out really shines. For me, personally, at least. And from the trailer, we have seen a couple other extracts from that. We've seen the sarcasm and suppressed emotions. Although, technically, they should be calling those bottled emotions, but still. These two examples alone were enough to make me think this was just worthy of a sequel. But let's go into some of the official descriptions of this movie, slowly and chronologically, to see what else they bring to the table. Apparently, before the extract of a third of a movie, Amy Poehler herself came out to the stage to introduce the sequel as the new story that captures the beauty and hilarity of the emotions emotions we experience on a daily basis. That's true, this movie needs to be deep as well as comedic, you know, the basics of entertainment really. And though in the cast both fear and disgust have been replaced, I haven't heard any complaints either from the audience in that room either. Now apparently with a little bit of time passing since the first movie, Riley has grown to be kind and is of course involved with hockey. Until, oh whoa, puberty begins. You've seen this part in the trailer, they smash up the whole thing, it's a whole wrecking crew system. And then suddenly next day, pop into existence five new emotions. I kind of want that to be explored more. Like, where did they come from? Why do they just exist? I mean, I guess the original emotions existed like that as well, but who knows? Does an emotion get a send-off as well? Maybe fear dies at the end of this movie because Riley becomes courageous, you know? Anxiety replaces fear. They're kind of one in the same anyway. That would be interesting, actually, if they replace an entire emotion by the end of the movie. Don't know what that means for mental health context, but sure. Now, in previous videos as well, we've discussed all sorts of the crew and production team around Inside Out 2 from just the initial trailer, so go check that out if you want to hear about Pete Doctor again. And really, what it seems like what we've gotten from the trailers so far is most of the 30-minute segment. The movie takes 30 minutes to really roll into action. We need to see a little bit of the emotions first as themselves. We need to 
see a whole extract of Riley in her new phase of her life. Then we need puberty to be explosively started. Then we need to see all of the emotions. Then we need to see the emotions interacting with each other. Then we need the conflict to begin. Then we need them to be chucked out. And then we can see the sarcasm. That kind of does sound like 30 minutes in and of itself. It's just the main pitch, the trailer in its fullest form. Welcome to the halfway mark. Thank you for making it this far in. Do let us know your thoughts on Inside Out 2 and what you think they can explore. Can you predict any jokes that you think they're going to tell? Some of them seem pretty simple when I hear the concept of what concept they're playing with. But I'll be curious to see what kind of jokes they come up with. I think that's going to be the real highlight of this movie, surprisingly. Anyway, this was just a midway plug to remind you to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with more CinemaCon news and everything else. I'll let you know when we start going into real spoiler territory, if I haven't done already. But for now, I'll let you get back to the coverage of Inside Out 2 at CinemaCon. However, beyond just those simple puns and ideas, apparently there's a whole bunch of new expository elements to Riley's mind that get explained. Right, and it's at this point that I am plugging in a spoiler warning. We're going to start going into the concepts of the mind and some of the th new things that they're exploring in this movie. It's only the first third of the movie, so it's not really that grand. It's basically just the idea plus, you know, a little bit more than who the new batch of emotions are. But even still, if you don't even know what's beyond the sarcasm, consider a pause here. Thank you anyway if you did reach at this point. And now let's dig in. Sometimes in a more practical front, such as how there is all sorts of new technology, including the fact that the panel gets bigger, as we have seen in the trailer, as well as apparently an entire belief system. Kind of like the idea of the island theme parks from before. However, now these belief systems help to inform Riley's sense of self. A real identity crisis element of not just emotions array, but who are you as a person, which is... Oh my god, immediately the kind of depth I want to see from a kid's movie, I'll be honest. This is what I'm always striving for. Oh, and that's interesting. I've just seen here that um, apparently as well, which helps with leading the plot, the belief system is actually a little bit more intertwined with the plot line, as Anxiety is trying to fundamentally change Riley's personality and her beliefs. I guess it makes sense they've expedited it so early on, it's gonna be kind of a main thing by the end. With the real epilogue being about what Riley comes to truly learn to believe of about herself. Yeah, we love an identity crisis at 13. There's also more classic tropes of puberty put in there. There's some growth spurts, there's some braces, and also her personality islands also grow in a certain way. And whilst the first movie managed to inject its conflict by having Riley entirely move home, it seems the conflict around Riley's actual location this time is entirely by taking place during hockey camp. So she's already going to be isolated from her family to a certain extent in unknown territory and having to deal with relationship and career dramas instead the entire time. Now, I've been pondering over this uh, belief system and exactly how they're going to represent this in the movie, but it turns out I found one singular description of this uh, system, and it does actually appear in the trailer, what do you know? It's this big linely pillar thing, I believe, as the belief system is described as a pond. Essentially, you can place a sentence of some sort into the pond and it will lift up into a light that then leads into something. With current beliefs being the likes of homework is terrible and I'm in love with a boy band. I can't wait for the final moment to be I am okay, I am enough, I am special, you know, there'll be something like that. It'll always be I am, I bet. And that'll be how anxiety is going to warp Riley's beliefs of herself. And then one other pun thing that does get explored on the inside of her mind beyond the sarcasm and the suppressed emotions is apparently the fact that there is a character of some sort who is denial. Apparently that's a good bit of comedy there. I can see it already. They just say, no, I'm not. No, it's not. No, he isn't. The whole way through. I, I, it writes itself. And really, it does sound like everyone really found this to be a great comedy all the way throughout, with all sorts of jokes for parents, like a sign saying puberty is messy when they're destroying, you know, the control room. And really, actually, when I think of the post credit scenes and the shorts that showed all the other things that could happen around emotions, like girls in the boy's head and dog's emotions as well, I think there's a lot of room for a lot of humour there, which is clearly the thing that it doesn't come to my mind when I think of an Inside Out movie right now. But apparently, Riley does display some big features feelings on the outside, so there's all sorts of room for comedic chops to happen there. Beyond all of that, apparently the preview then comes to a conclusion with the bottled emotions being placed into a vault whereby Riley's secrets are held, and she has one big deep dark secret that no one will find out about for another half an hour. Ooh. So really, 
sounds like it's just trailer plus. Just it happened to be 35 minutes long. All sorts of audiences seem to be completely wooed by this movie, both comedically and conceptually. That's really all you need. It's another modern classic Pixar, which is a surprise to see, considering the current state of Pixar and Disney. But considering the original made $858 million worldwide and won the 2016 Oscar for Best Animated Feature, I guess maybe it's not a surprise that the sequel is pretty damn good as well. I guess we best just cherish the memories while we can, as Pixar's apparently cooking up something great. At some point soon there will be a trailer 3 right before launch, but what more can they really show? The first 30 minutes is fine enough for movie content, and I guess we could have pieced all the pieces together from what we've seen already. But on that note, I'm gonna end it off there. My name's been Daz, thank you very much for reaching the end of this video. Do let me know your thoughts on Inside Out 2, what other creative things would you like them to explore? Maybe what jokes would you like to see on the outside of the body for Riley? We've discussed some of the internal brain things more, but what fun do you think they could do with Riley on the outside? The only other note I've actually found is that uh, apparently her family personality island is smaller than before. Thematically, you could see that all coming together as well in puberty. It'll, I, it could, it all just, it writes itself. Just don't make it inside out three. Uh, you might be running out of potential there. Anyway, I'm rambling long enough. I shall see you in a little bit. <laughs>